Hello everyone, today we will learn about an issue related to war. Maybe it will happen in the future and trigger World War III. Mr. Trump is currently running for president. And often threatened that if he was elected, America might withdraw from NATO. So suppose the US actually withdraws from NATO and suppose the US and Russia have a war against each other, then what will happen and which side has the higher chance of winning? Let's try to analyze together, to predict which two countries will win a war, we must consider many factors. Actually, the two warring countries are large-scale and extremely complicated, but basically it is like two warring villages. To see which side has a higher chance of winning, we must take into account many factors, at least the equipment of the parties, the forces of the parties, the logistics capabilities of the parties, and international relations. Economy, then the economies of the parties and the terrain of the parties as well. Only then will we have a more multidimensional and accurate view. By the way, when it comes to Russia and America, many of you will say that oh my god, if you give a few atomic bombs, you'll be able to hunt for anything, but there's nothing that needs to be analyzed, so that's true. But we only consider the war on the condition that both sides do not use atomic bombs. But if nuclear weapons are used, nothing can be predicted, but the highest possibility is that both countries will become ruins. Therefore, if there is a nuclear war, both countries will lose and neither side will win. Because there's nothing left after the war, so let's ignore the nuclear factor. Now let's try to compare and see, first of all, in terms of equipment, which side has the advantage. First, in terms of the number of aircraft, according to data on the Global Firepower website, by 2024, the US currently has 13,000 aircraft of all types while Russia has just over 4,000. From fighter aircraft to transport aircraft, to training aircraft to helicopters, the US has more than Russia. This is not surprising since Russia only has military bases in a few places. The US has up to 800 military bases globally. That requires the US to have weapons that are convenient to move and easy to operate, and one of them is aircraft. So in terms of number of aircraft, America overwhelms Russia. When talking about airplanes, of course we have to consider something very important, aircraft carriers. Because you see that using airplanes in war brings great advantages, but airplanes can't work everywhere. Especially when sending troops to attack another country and having to go by sea, deploying aircraft to targets thousands of kilometers away is extremely difficult because the aircraft sometimes runs out of gas and then fights. What else? That's why people created the aircraft carrier, giving it a superior advantage. Let's see. Currently, the US is the country with the most aircraft carriers in the world. The US currently has 11 aircraft carriers, usually about 3 to 5 are always on patrol throughout the oceans. Have one third ready to go if one of the others has a problem. The remaining one third is maintained during idle time. In general, the US always has aircraft carriers to deploy while Russia only has one and it is quite small compared to US ships. Currently, it is also inoperable and must be maintained for six years continuously after an incident and it is predicted that it will not be until 2024. If it passes the tests, Russia will be able to deploy the aircraft carrier. Thus, in terms of aircraft carriers, Russia is completely inferior to the US. But besides aircraft carriers, what about other types of ships? According to data, the total number of Russian ships is nearly 800 while America's is only nearly 500. However, the US has more ships than Russia in terms of Detroit ships, that is, large warships, the US has 75 ships and Russia has only 14 ships, on the contrary, Russia has more ships than the US in terms of frigates, convertes, patrol boats and ships. Min, in general, Russia is superior to the US in terms of small ships. Depending on the attack strategy, each side will have different advantages, but clearly with a large number of aircraft carriers and destroyers, the US has the advantage. Better in coordinating with ground and air forces. What about weapons on the ground? In terms of numbers, Russia outnumbers the US in the number of tanks, nearly 15,000 compared to nearly 5,000 in the US. The same goes for self-propelled guns. 
Russia has 6,000, the US has only 1,500 towed guns, Russia has 8,300 and the US has 1,200 mobile rocket launchers. Russia has 3,000 while the US only has nearly 700. Looking here, we see US weapons developing in a modern way, equipping the US military towards fighting globally. So if they develop more aircraft carriers and more planes to fight wars on other lands, the deployment will be faster, but the US is often difficult to attack right on its own soil, so there are fewer tanks and fewer long-range missile launchers. Not too far away, with few self-propelled guns because if these weapons were used from American soil, they would probably only be used to attack Cuba. War in the direction of modern America, most will use missiles and UAVs. Besides, America has a lot of money so they are willing to sacrifice weapons to reduce the loss of soldiers' lives. Just imagine, using all missiles with drones is very expensive. But it requires few troops to control and few casualties. If you sit in a tank or armored vehicle on the battlefield, even standing next to the cannon barrel, if you are attacked, the loss of life will be greater. As for Russia, with their country's location vulnerable to ground attacks from neighboring countries, it is reasonable for them to have many tanks, many artillery pieces, and many short-range missile launchers. Russia does not deploy troops globally nor does it play the role of world police, but its weapons have an advantage for defense. Therefore, if Russia and America go to war, America will attack Russia and attack Russian soil. It is difficult for the US and Russia to predict which side will win because the US is used to deploying troops to other lands around the globe. But if Russia attacks America and hits American soil, it will be extremely difficult for Russia because it is difficult to send troops and weapons far away and must go by sea. However, war between Russia and America is actually not necessarily that simple. Because Russia and America both have intercontinental missiles. Even without nuclear weapons, they can still carry regular explosives and sit at home and shoot at the enemy country. The thing is that without nuclear weapons, Russia would probably find it difficult to play this way with the US. Because intercontinental ballistic missiles are extremely expensive, firing them with only conventional warheads is like setting mines in a river to catch a few fish, so wasteful and meaningless. America has nothing but money, and Russia has certain limits. In fact, to see which side is more advantageous in the war between Russia and the US, the most important thing to know is the number of drones on both sides and the number of missiles from short range to long range. But there are no statistics on this, so it is difficult to evaluate, because both sides hide it very carefully, but this is very important, in the Ukrainian war, you see that almost both sides fought with missiles. The same goes for the Israeli war. Although there are no statistics on missiles, we currently see that Russia has used a lot of missiles in Ukraine. They are also said to have to be imported from North Korea, so Russia may not have as many missiles as the US. If war breaks out, America may have an advantage, but if Ukraine is at peace now. Wait a few years and Russia will mass-produce missiles to add to its inventory. At that time, America lost its advantage, and in terms of the number of active troops, the two countries were equal at about 13 million troops. Russia has 250,000 reserves and the US does not. But compared to the number of troops in the war with the US, it doesn't seem to be very important because as said, the US has a lot of money and they have used it in the military field, which means that some weapons can be used. It is controlled by computers and only requires a few soldiers to handle it. In Russia, AI applications in the military seem to be limited. After all, the US is a powerhouse in artificial intelligence technology, maybe China is the country that the US has to worry about, not Russia. In addition, the amount of money spent on the military amounts to $830 billion a year. While Russia only has about $110 billion, the US clearly has too many advantages compared to Russia. America's weapons and equipment are always improved and maintained to be modern, while Russia, with eight times less money, still has to raise an amount of weapons and equipment every year nearly equal to America's. If we can do it, either Russia will have to maintain fewer weapons or Russia will have to have fewer weapons, so more money is very important, guys. Not to mention that if war breaks out, the US has many allies to borrow more weapons from. 
Even if they leave NATO, their economic relationships with many countries will still help them get a lot of help, while Russia has fewer allies if it does. Being close to China, I think that if there is a war, China will still be far from helping Russia because the economic relationship between the US and China is still very dependent on each other, not to mention China's largest partner is Asia. Most of you are also friends of America. So after analyzing, try to guess which side will win, and I hope war will not happen. Thank you for watching, hello and see you again, I'm Vinladio.